go to something else. Um, is this right? Yeah, okay, you guys, so here you go. Um, let, let me adjust this very quickly. Let me adjust this. Here you guys go. Um, so this is actually chess software that I think, I, I mean, I, th I think you guys um, can see it. Okay, so this is a game between Alvarez Marquez, Johan Alvarez Marquez against me. This was in, in a Caribbean Open Port of Spain in Trinidad and Tobago in on January 13th, 1999. So I will, um, let me just make the board bigger. Does this make it better? Okay, here we go. And now I will just um, control flip, okay. So let's see, this is 1999, January 13th. Let's, let's take a look. Okay, so far so good. Okay, slightly different, different order set, but same thing. As I said, you guys, I played pawn to e5. He did not take, he actually played, um, he actually played rook a b1. And I remember this because during the game, I thought I was much better. Like the idea was I was gonna go like, I was gonna go like, you know, f5, e4, knight h5, and, and like f4 and e4, and I would just be like crushing him on this king side. Um, but I didn't actually, uh, I didn't actually do that. I actually misplayed this because I, I did go knight h5, and I thought I'm much, much better here. Um, I remember WTF. Yeah, of course, it was only 1999. I mean, like, that's not that long ago. Anyway, I do remember that I thought during the game I was much, much better because I would basically get this whole attack. Um, unfortunately, my opponent was much, I mean, 2200, I think, is wrong. I think he was actually like 2350 at the time. Um, but he goes queen d3. I go here. I play f5 and I thought like I'm already much much better because basically I've got everything I want but the problem is is that I can't really open this side because white's rook is better than mine and if I try to go f4 then he trades and then he actually opens up his long diagonal right down towards my king so um so I thought I was much better during the game and obviously I was very young at the time so I, I wasn't I didn't really understand what was going on so I thought wow I'm just much better I'm gonna win this game um so anyway I, I forgot I basically here after bishop a1 i might have been better but what i had to do is i needed to close this queen side so that white can't open it up because when i play bishop g7 he trade he trades and i realized during the game like when i take on b5 um he can play like b4 and um and suddenly like my, my queen side is falling apart and he's going to get all these attacks down towards my rook and my queen and i also don't really get my king side attack rolling here so um why did i lose because my opponent was better than me <laughs> plain and simple so i played e4 in this game he goes queen e2 and now i took with the bishops again i thought well you know look if i take this way b4 is really bad so i take he takes trades and now he goes knight c4 um i think black maybe is okay here but uh at some point i misplayed this how did i lose this? oh yeah because basically i ended up like with everything off sides here i don't get any king side attack and white can just reroute the bishop and attack everything over here on this queen side so so basically, um, how am I doing this in Microsoft Word? This is not Microsoft Word, you guys. This is chess base, uh, chess base 14, I believe it is. Um, so, so as you see, like basically, um, I end up blundering. Wait, rook c? No, this hangs a knight. I probably didn't do this. Maybe it has a notation wrong. I think I probably I went rook a7 instead. Um, but anyway, yeah, queen b2. And then, then basically, I, th these moves are off, I think, somehow. But, but anyway, as you see, in the long run, I did lose this game. But the point is that basically, I, the first time I ever looked at this line was during this, this tournament way back in 1999, this whole idea of playing pawn to e5. And actually, later on, my stepfather used it um, in an important game as well, which I will... Um, actually, let me, let me change the scene so I don't leak my actual databases. Um, let me, uh, let me, let me uh, check something else. Um, uh, one second. Okay, now I can go back. Um, here we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to leak my actual databases. Okay, so is this the game? Yeah, so here's the game. So I'll stop this. So, so later on, actually, and this wasn't much later in, in 2000, my stepfather, Snillwear Mantra, I guess you, you can't actually see this. Um, can I cut this a little bit so you can see this? Um, you can't see this picture. Anyway, um, so this was a game that was played in 2000. Not much later, by the way. This was on, um, uh, July 12, 2000. So it was maybe a year and a half later, but I, I remember sharing this idea with my stepfather and he actually used this line and employed it in, in a very nice, or he didn't actually get the line, but he was gonna play this line against John Donaldson um, in this tournament in Vermont. I think it was like a year later. So uh, so this, by the way, is my stepfather. I think you can see the picture, um, just a couple of pictures of him. Uh, yeah, just, you know, uh, titles, Fide Masters, you can see. Current Elo is 2026. Uh, he doesn't play much, but uh, Lyric <laughs> looks just like Lyric. 
<laughs> good one, you guys. Good one. Um, but as you see, this is just the ELO. Or let me. Can I move the ELO profile so you guys can see it? Or I, no, I can't move it. Okay, so I'll just I'll move my cam for a second. Um, as you guys can see, uh, his 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 peak his peak was twenty three twenty in nineteen eighty. It looks like yeah, 19, 19, January first, nineteen eighty. My stepfather's peak ELO was two thousand three hundred twenty five. Um, on January 1st, 1980, at the age of 29 years old. Um, <laughs> this is not stonks, you guys. <laughs> I just leaked the database. I know it's it's mega database, you guys. Anyway, just showing you a little bit of fun stuff. Um, so this was his chart. Uh, as you see, I mean, he, he was very good. Then kind of was teaching a lot. Sort of stopped playing one, once I became an adult. And I started doing stuff on my own. And, um, and then you see the drop off. Obviously, he is 69 years old now. Born in 1951. So, um... So yeah, he's so 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 yeah, 69 years old. Um, uh, nice, nice, nice. Yes, very funny, very funny chat. This is my stepfather. Okay, so we'll just. I'll, the point I was going to say though is that basically he had this game against John Donaldson, and he did do what I just did in my last game, where he played Bishop G4 with this Knight A5, C5, and so forth. And his idea against Donaldson was actually to play the same way with like A6, Rook B8, Bishop D7, B5, and E5, like I did. Um, so that, that was his original idea, um, was to basically copy me out. This is a game, again, it's crazy for me to say this because this was a game from uh, 2000, but I remember this very well because I showed him the idea and he liked it and he was going to use it. Donaldson played something different, so it didn't actually occur, but my stepfather, um, he, he did win the game anyway. So, all right. Now you guys want a game of my brother. Is, is that what you want? Okay. Oh, I just leaked something. Whatever. Who cares? I just leaked something. French winner or whatever. Okay, they're PGNs. Nobody, nobody cares. Um, whatever. Um, okay, let's take a look. I don't care, chat. Th those aren't actually my real databases. Um, and it doesn't matter. Good one, good one. Clip it, clip it, clip it. Yeah, but the thing is... Uh, you, you, no one knows what's what's in it anyway. Like I've played the I've playing the Winowar, yes, yes, exactly, you guys playing the Winowar. Okay, so you want me to show my brother as well? So um, let's let's pull up a game that my brother played against um, in 1996, I believe it was. My brother played in the uh, World Chess Championship. Let's 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 pop this up. Let's pop this game up because this is a game that you guys would know. Um, so this was a game that my brother played in the World Championship under 10 years old in Menorca, Spain in 1996 against the Super Grandmaster, um, uh, former candidate Tamur Rajbov. Um, my brother lost this game, but this was against Rajbov, who everyone in chat knows, very strong Grandmaster. Um, so so yeah, so this this is my this is my brother. Um, I think you guys can see, let me move it over a little bit. You can see just two pictures. Um, this picture, I, I do remember, I don't, I don't know this picture, um, but this, this second picture at least is from, um, the U S open in, in, uh, Honolulu, Hawaii in 1998. Um, and here's the ELO profile. As you see, FIDE rating, not a whole lot. Um, 20, 21, 60 at 16, then kind of, he stopped playing at the age of 18. So that's why you see the flat. The flat bar line here. Yes, flat line. Exactly. Yes, flat line. Very, very consistent. Exactly. Yeah, completely consistent. Um, consistent ELO. Yeah. So he just stopped playing uh, FIDE rated events at the age <laughs> in 2004, I think at the age of uh, like, how, when was he born? He was born in 85. So at the age of like 18, 19, he stopped playing, um, playing tournaments. So that's him. I guess you guys want to see my ELO. Is that what you want to see? You, you, you probably want to see mine, right? Um, actually, is this game against me in here? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Um, yeah, the, his game against me is in here. So I'll just pop this up. Okay. So this was the game that my brother and I played in the U.S. US Junior Championship in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 2001. Um, uh, yes, I did win this game. But yeah, here's here's my profile. Um, okay. Interesting pictures already. Okay. We've all seen this picture. Let's see. 35 pictures. Oh, my God. Way too many pictures of me. Ridiculous. Um I'll, 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 I'll keep going. Okay. I had a bad hair today there. Okay. Okay. Olympiad pictures, more 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 pictures, 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 pictures. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's the last picture. Um, Molding and molding, I'm, I'm molding in every single picture. 
I I'm molding in every single picture? Yeah, totally, you guys. <laughs> the glasses, Alameo, Wh which one is the glasses? Oh, this one? Yeah, so I remember this actually quite well, too, because this was, um, this, this was funny. So there is a story to this, not to the glasses specifically, but to this event. Like, I remember this very well, because on that exact day that, um, that I wore the sunglasses, my stuff, this was during a tournament in Gibraltar. The, I think it was one of the first times I played in 2005. And this, on this day, those of you who've been to the, been to Gibraltar, which is on, on the border with Spain, um, know that the tournament that's held there every year is held in a very isolated part of the city. It's in a hotel on the, on the ocean. It's the 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes into the city. Anyway, I remember this very well because on that specific day, um, my, my stepfather and I decided to go into town because I needed, I needed kind of to, to, to get a watch. Um, and so we went to, I, I think it was just a generic Swiss, 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 uh, shop, but we went there and I think I wanted to buy like a Rado, R-A-D-O was the brand. Um, and, and my stepfather basically was like negotiating the price. So I think originally the price was like $2,000. And then I think we like settled on like 1500, but by the time that we finished, um, by the time we finished negotiating, and getting, getting the watch, like we had to literally hightail it on the bus to get back to the playing site in time for our round. Um, so, uh, so I do remember this very well because I, I bought I bought a Rado on the day that this picture was taken, and that T-shirt, by the way, that I'm wearing as well, is a T-shirt that I have out in my living room somewhere. It's a T-shirt from uh, from Cuernavaca, Mexico, that I'm wearing here. It's a black T-shirt, and then I'm wearing the black and gray. Uh, it was um, champion uh, windbreaker. I don't have it anymore, but I remember that. And sunglasses, I don't have either. Um, they, they, these are not. I don't have the sunglasses. Um, Casually purchasing a 1500 watch. I, it's the only watch I had. My stepfather bought it for me. Anyway, um, use it as a chess.com profile picture. Oh, right. But then the last part that I was going to add for you guys is, um, so here's my ELO profile. Um, so, okay. You see, it starts at like, it starts at a, a 21, sub 2100. And then it starts going up like <laughs> stonks. Yeah. Stonks. Exactly. Um, yeah. So, so basically, it just uh, it goes it it, it, uh, it it goes up and then it peaks. It comes down a little bit, but pretty pretty stable. Um, I think the first time I crossed twenty seven hundred should be yeah. It was like it was it was May of two thousand and nine in in France. Um, better than SPY probably yeah. It's flatten the curve, flatten the curve right, flatten the curve. I just need to flatten it right up here where this top line is right. So so basically the the next the next leg needs to be up. So like if you do like the you, you do the do the uh, do the technical analysis. Like there's going to be a big spike up to like 2775 somewhere, and then there's going to be some resistance. So you draw the resistance line, and then you you go up and and so forth. Um, but yeah, all right, you guys. I, I if I want to be really really like weird, I would take this and put this in uh put this in in like paint or something and start drawing like drawing lines. But I'm not going to do that. Um, so yeah, show Hans. Oh sure, okay. I, I I can I can get I can do that. Um, let me let me change the scene so you guys uh you you guys don't see what's on my on my uh, chest base. Okay, it's uh, Neiman is is it two n? It's uh is it one n or two n? How how many is it? It's n i e m a n n right? Is it n i e n i e m a n n right? Okay, let's see. Is this right? I think it's 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 a one M two ends if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, so I'll just stop. Okay, now I can go back. Okay, so Hans, or no, sorry, wait, wait, who is Heinrich Niemann? What the? Wait, what? Sorry, I just stopped. So I saw Niemann H. Wait, what? No, but this is not Hans. This is Heinrich Niemann. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Um, are there really no games of Hans? No, these, th these games are all played by Heinrich Niemann. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Let, let me change and do another search. Um, but Niemann is, is, is it, it's, it's, yeah, let, let me, let me do another search. Um, I don't know who Heinrich is. I just saw Niemann H and I thought that had to be Hans. Um, Hans, his real name is leaked. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Where is Hans? Um, yeah, I'll get back to chess in a second, you guys. No worries. That can, that's not Hans's dad, is it? That can't be. Okay, Hans M. Niemann. Okay, here we go. Okay, finally. Okay, um, let's go back. Okay, let's just click on a random game. Um, let's see. Let's click on this game. 
Okay. So this is just a random game of Hans. Let's click on, oh, poor Hans. He doesn't have a picture in chess space. Oh no. What is this? There's no image. There's no image. That's, that's just not right. That's just wrong. Um, yeah, that's just, just not right. Okay. Let's take a look at the ELO profile. So of course it's much, much shorter because obviously he's very young. Um, okay. So this actually looks like the stock market. This looks like very, very unstable. Like look at this up, boop, up big, boop, up big, down, up again, stabilizing. Okay. This is Hans needs to stabilize here because when you look at this, like the trend trend is suggesting there's going to be another, um, it's looking like there's going to be another big, big spike down, but, and then there's going to be a big, big, like redemption, big spike back up. So Hans kind of needs to stabilize in this 24, 2450 range. Cause like, I, I could see him testing 2400. Um, if he, if he has like a couple bad events, you could see the trend testing down at, at 2400 and 2400 being the new, new resistance. Um, so yeah, this is a, this is definitely, um, an interesting chart though. Cause normally when you look at kids, like if you pull up like Ali Reza, for example, who I will find now, um, uh, who cares, who cares? I, I don't care. Um, I really don't care. I'm not leaking anything. Okay. Ali Reza Farouja. Let's, um, let's, 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 let's see what Farouja says. Did I spell Farouja right? Wait a second. Did I spell it right? Did I spell his name right? Let me see. Is that correct? It's F I R O U Z J A, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Let's look leaked. I don't care. Chad. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. I leaked all my strategies. Yes. Chat. I, unless I open an actual file, I'm not leaking anything. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what it says. Obviously Ali Rez is very young. So it's going to take a second for the games to pop up. Okay. I'll just stop it here. Let's click on a random game. Okay. Ali Reza. Um, okay. He's got, I see even Ali Reza. He's, he's got his pictures too, but poor Hans, just no pictures. Okay. So see, let's see Ali Reza. Okay. Big up down. Interesting. Okay. Up, down, up, up. And then just 2475 now just a straight up. Um, but I think this is a little bit out of date. I think the, I think the, the ELO is out of date cause it hasn't updated yet. Uh, it's probably like six months out of date, but anyway, you'll see that there's like the big trend is spiking up, um, all the way to 27 plus. So, so yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. And only the one small spike down. See that that's the thing. Like you normally see like one small spike down, but you don't just see, you don't see, you don't, you don't normally see like three or four the way that you didn't see and you saw in Hans's graph. So it's kind of interesting to look at this a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is fun. Show, show, uh, show, show Magnus really. Okay, fine. I'll change the scene and I'll show it. I don't know why I care. I already leaked enough, but who cares? Um, okay. Magnus Carlson. Okay. There we go. Magnus is, is probably straight up too, but it's, it's a good, it's a good chart to look at. Um, okay. One second. Okay. Here we go. I can already stop it. I think let me just stop it. Okay. There we go. Okay. So let's click on this game. doesn't really matter. Okay. Here's Magnus. Okay. 57 normal, normal. Actually, I should go the other way. So we see the oldest ones. Wow. Old pictures. Jeez. Crazy, crazy, crazy pictures. Insane. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So let's look at the ELO profile. Okay. So, okay. So starts at like sub 2100 right down here at the bottom has a big up gap to like almost 2600. It's very slight downward dip. Maybe what's that? Like 40, 30, 40 points, maybe two bad results. And then again, just up consistently up slight flat line here. Not surprising above 27, small, small downward trend, but in general, very consistent. So like when you look at this kind of, kind of chart, like this is what you would, this is kind of what you would see, um, normally with players. You won't see a straight up, but you'll see it. You'll see a pretty standard, like upward trend with very few big spikes down, which shows the consistency and just the pure mental, mental strength as well to not, not be losing rating points. So, so yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think, I, I mean, if you, do you guys really want to do, see me do Kasparov? I mean, I can obviously find Kasparov somewhere in here. Um, where, where is Gary Kimovich? Gary Kimovich. I think he played Magnus in 2003 or something or 2004. Let's see. Where is it? Um, actually I can just do Elo white. That's how I do it. Okay. So Elo white is Gary Kimovich Kasparov. Okay. 
So Kasparov, okay, hundred and fifty nine pictures. Oh my gosh. Let's let's see what. Are, so there's a picture of Gary from nineteen sixty five. Wow, crazy. Jeez, insane, crazy. Wow. Anyway, okay, let's check the Elo profile. Okay, um, so here is Gary. Okay, the the the, the classic joke of flatlining again is coming up. Um. So here you see, <laughs> so, so, so I think when Gary was playing, he started out with a much higher rating because the ratings weren't, they, there weren't as many rankings back then and it wasn't as established. So his first rating is like 2575. It looks like pretty standard up though. Again, you see very up one small dip up, up, up one small dip up, small dip up, small dip up. So you see like a lot of these people near the top have a very, have a very slight down downward trend. But it's not like a big line down. It's not like this the straight line down the way that um, you will see with some other people. So, so yeah, pretty standard, good stuff. Gary, twenty eight fifty. He held that for like I think for like two years, which is insane. From like two thousand to two thousand two, almost. And then, then of course, when he dipped to like twenty twenty seven ninety five or whatever it was, twenty eight hundred ish, he of, of course retired. So, um, yeah, very impressive though. Very impressive chart for Gary as well. Yeah. All right, you guys, I am going to get back to playing some chess. I think if there's anybody who wants to play,